Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. In front of me I have the Nation Master 2S and well, it looks like just any other laser engraver of which there are a dime a dozen on AliExpress. This one actually surprised me quite a bit. Let me tell you why. Now, full disclosure, this uh, laser was sent to me free of charge by Neje, but they have not paid me in any way and uh, do not have any influence over what I'm saying about this laser. Starting at the beginning, taking it out of the box, it is super quick to assemble. Uh, just four nuts that you have to put on and uh, like three cables to plug in. It's gonna take you less than five minutes and most likely you will, you will not need the manual. And then plugging it into your computer, everything uh, just works. Uh, they actually have their own engraving software uh, that you can use with it, uh, which works quite well. I'll show you a bit more of that later. Uh, but you can, of course, also use uh, Laser Gribble or Lightburn or any soft other software you might prefer. Now, the version I have here is the 20 watt uh, laser version. Uh, there are a bunch of different configurations of this available. I um, saw some 20 watts, some 30 watts, uh, I think also some 40 watt out there. There are some that include some uh, air assist as well, uh, but uh, this here uh, is a 20 watt uh, laser head on uh, 17 by 17 centimeters of uh, engraving area. This is quite small, but for most designs, uh, this is perfectly fine. Combined with uh, this being like a cantilever style, uh, this is very inexpensive as there really is not a whole lot to it. Uh, but as you can see uh, in front of me and from the video clips, uh, it is still a very capable laser. Now at less than half the price of the Laser Master 2 Pro, we cannot really compare those two machines. Uh, but this is not trying to be a Laser Master 2 Pro. The way I see it, uh, this is a beginner laser. Uh, your first laser, you're not really sure if you want one, uh, but you're just getting something cheap. You have a couple projects that you might want to do, uh, but you don't want to dedicate a big space uh, in your uh, workshop uh, for a, a laser. This can be easily stowed away in a drawer, uh, on a shelf somewhere, and it doesn't really take up any space. And while the engraving area is just 17 by 17 centimeters, you can engrave those 17 by 17 centimeters on a workpiece as large as you want. It's very portable, you can just set it on top. If I want to engrave something on this table, I just set it wherever I want, set it to focus and it engraves. And also targeted at beginners is their software. And it actually is quite decent. Uh, now, let me explain. Upon opening this software, it immediately recognizes that there is a Nature Master connected and will connect to it and no need to press any connect buttons or select any ports, you're up and running right away. Then you're greeted by a very intuitive window where you basically see your engraving area and uh, there is a library of included designs that you can choose from uh, which uh, inc include some various patterns, uh, some animal uh, motifs, uh, some Quite cute stuff, uh, which makes my job of testing this uh, a lot easier as I don't have to think up my own designs, I can just use one of those. And uh, then you can just click on the design, it uh, has a very intuitive way of uh, asking you for uh, the important parameters, where you're just gonna um, get two different previews uh, to choose between whether you want the outline engraved or whether you want it a scan engraved. Or if you're opening uh, like a JPEG or PNG image, uh, then you can also have it like a uh, grayscale or dithering engraved. And instead of giving you those three names to choose from, it gives you three different previews, uh, which then is very intuitive to choose which one is the one that looks like what you want. You're then asked uh, how big you want your design and you can easily rescale it. And it uh, kind of gives you a warning uh, if you want to make your design too large, uh, saying that it will take forever. And then you can use the very intuitive uh, controls to move the laser uh, to where the design is, then position your workpiece. Uh, there's the like very uh, common thing where you can have it uh, go round and around uh, your design to kind of uh, give you an outline, but you can also click on a specific point on the design in your preview and then the laser will move where that is going to be engraved. This makes it super easy to position your workpieces uh, correctly and does not really require any knowledge of laser engraving whatsoever. And then after that you just kind of click start. Uh, but if you followed along you might think now where did I tell it how fast to go or what laser power to use. 
And that is kind of a part of the software that is not very good. It's not really a controllable. I mean, you have a, a slider that you can select between 0 and 100% laser power, and uh, then you can set the exposure time. Now, I'm not sure what this refers to. It's a time in milliseconds, and you, that's a slider you can drag, and uh, the longer that time is, the slower the laser goes. I found that for uh, engraving on wood, uh, you need the very slowest, uh, the very fastest speed, so uh, one millisecond exposure time, and this really just doesn't give you much control, but what does that mean, one millisecond exposure time? Uh, I was not able to find it out, but uh, it actually works quite decent for wood engraving, one millisecond uh, is just about uh, good. Depending on what wood species you're using, you can do that with around 50 to 100% laser power. And what is kind of cool is that you can adjust those sliders on the fly, uh, meaning you can kind of dial in uh, your uh, material and uh, find out the perfect settings. What is also really neat about this software is that before it starts uh, engraving, it actually uploads the G code to the laser itself. So if you, I don't know, disconnect the USB cable, it just continues engraving and it's not disturbed. Or if your computer goes to sleep or whatever, it will just continue. Should you want to pause it after you have disconnected it from the computer, there's a button on the back uh, that allows you to pause and resume the print. And the kind of smart features don't end there. There is also supposedly tip detection. So that basically if uh, uh, the laser were to fall over or somebody were to bump into it, uh, it should detect that and it can stop the laser engraving. But uh, after it just randomly uh, decided uh, that it was tipping now uh, when it was clearly just stationary I turned that feature off. Uh, not really something I would be worried about and uh, it's kind of weird to see that safety feature when there are other things about safety that are much much worse. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera but there is a blue laser dot here and that laser dot appears the second you turn on the laser by plugging it in. The first time I was super surprised. I just plugged it in, expecting to first of all have to press a button to turn it on, uh, but it started immediately started moving and the laser was immediately firing. Now this is very very dim. It's uh, not really that dangerous, but if this were to shine directly into your light and happen to be focused for some odd reason, it would still do you harm. So. Especially for a beginner machine, for people that are not as familiar around lasers, this is super dangerous. And there's not even really a way to turn it off fully. This is just the minimum power that uh, this laser uh, fires at. And I mean, it is convenient in a way. Uh, you, to always have this laser spot, you don't need to manually turn it on. Uh, on the Artur lasers, for example, they are very adamant about laser safety in that regard and have timers built in that if you manually turn it on, uh, then after a certain uh, amount of time, depending on how uh, high of the power you manually turned it to, uh, it will uh, turn off again. And this can actually be somewhat annoying if you're uh, trying to line something up precisely or trying to focus it uh, and then it turns off on, on you. But the ex polar opposite of having it always on and no way to turn it off is definitely much worse. And I've already kind of uh, mentioned focusing sometimes. Uh, this is not a fixed focus lens which is somewhat surprising for a clearly beginner machine. Uh, it's very intuitive uh, to just kind of place a metal block there, adjust the laser till it touches, and then you know where focus is set. However, with this machine, you have to just twist the lens till it's perfectly in focus. And nailing that is quite difficult, and uh, certainly does require some experience. And Depending on what you're engraving, having that slightly off can actually drastically change your results. If you're uh, engraving a picture on wood, it probably won't notice if it's a little bit off. Uh, but if you are uh, an, you know, engraving on acrylics, or if you're uh, engraving on painted metal, then uh, just a slight variation uh, can mean that either your engraving will not look properly because there was not enough energy, or uh, it means that it's just very blurry or off in some other way. However, considering the price point, this is actually somewhat acceptable. And especially considering this laser diode. This is what kind of blew me away the most about this laser. Uh, it is a very budget-oriented laser, but the laser diode is actually really good. 
Now it is only 20 watts, uh, which uh, is about half the power than the 40 watts that you can find on uh, something uh, like the Atomstack A5 Pro. Uh, or it is also significantly less than the 30 watts uh, that you can uh, find on like the Skull Farm. But it is also cheaper than those machines and for it being a 20 watt laser, the laser spot itself is really good. Now if you have not watched any of my other laser reviews, a big problem with diode lasers is that the laser spot is uh, in most cases not a spot. It's actually a bit of a line or an oval or whatever you want to call it. Um, with one dimension being significantly longer than the other dimension. And what this means is that if you, you are uh, cutting into the direction where it is narrow, then you will engrave or cut a lot deeper than if you're moving into the other direction. In bad cases, this can be as extreme as if you're engraving on uh, fairly sensitive uh, material like uh, leather or painted metal, that uh, engraving in one direction and engraving into the other direction will yield significantly different uh, visual appearances. On this laser, the difference is extremely small. Now, depending on exactly how you focus it, uh, there is a bit of a difference, uh, but uh, I was able to get it to basically almost perfect square, which I have not been able to achieve on most of the other lasers. Now, the spot size of this uh, square is slightly larger than the narrow dimension of uh, most of these other machines, but uh, at around 0.2 millimeters of width of the laser spot, it is very acceptable and definitely within a, a good range. On most of the other machines, uh, you could get the laser spot to about uh, 0.1 or 0.15 millimeters in the narrow dimension and around 0.2 to 0.3 in, in the wider dimension. So having it at around 0.2 in both dimensions is actually very decent. And because of this, although it's not very powerful, it's actually very well suited for cutting. When cutting plywood, uh, this difference uh, of power, whichever way you go, has the result that while you are long through in one direction, you still uh, have to do more passes in the other direction. With this uh, machine, I was able to uh, easily cut through uh, 2 mm, 3 mm, 4 mm plywood, uh, but fairly slow speeds. Uh, but if you just want to uh, do some cutting every once in a while, it is perfectly fine. I did two passes at uh, 200 mm a minute in uh, 3 mm plywood. That is about uh, twice as much uh, time as it takes the Atomstack A5 Pro or the Laser Master. Uh, but still very respectable and since it's not a machine that you're gonna I don't know, run production with, I think this is perfectly acceptable. And the rather slow speeds do uh, continue in engraving as well. I did this uh, picture engraving here uh, with the Nisha software, which might have something to do with it, but it took two full hours. That's crazy. Uh, I did similar sized uh, engravings uh, on my other laser machines and they were all between 15 and 30 minutes. Uh, so this was about four times as long. Now looking very closely at it, it looks like it is also a lot more detailed. Uh, so I guess the settings uh, that the Nation software uses is just a lot finer, which is why this took longer. Uh, but even engraving uh, Simple designs like this, uh, which I then switched to Lightburn for uh, the, the later testing to have more control, uh, it was not exactly fast. The accelerations uh, used are quite slow, uh, which is probably due to them using uh, pancake stepper motors, uh, assuming to save cost. Uh, but otherwise, uh, with this very small and light laser head, uh, they could actually uh, push those accelerations quite a bit further. Maybe there's a way to uh, replace this motor with a slightly larger one and push those accelerations, but that would definitely involve firmware hacking. And it's not just slow, but if you look very closely, it is also not all that accurate. Now, on these very fine uh, lines here, uh, now, granted, this is very, very uh, much magnified. Uh, the actual design is quite small and it's barely noticeable by eye, but you can see quite a bit of jittery edges. And that does improve somewhat if you slow it down quite a bit, uh, but uh, it does not fully vanish. There you can just basically see that this is not a perfectly rigid frame and it is still a fairly cheap machine, but I think we definitely need picking at this point. 
in big uh, flat engraved areas you in acrylic uh, here you can also see that there is some bit of patterning in there which is definitely caused uh, by the stepper motors and the belts uh, just kind of having some uh, inconsistencies in there as it is very regular and it changes with uh, the laser speed you can see towards the edges where it's already slowing down a bit uh, the banding is a bit closer however at the end of the day we have to think again about the price of this machine now I'm not going to mention any exact prices here since they usually fluctuate quite a lot but it's under $200 and probably closer to $150 which is a very very good price for what this machine is capable of. So in conclusion if you are thinking of possibly getting your first laser and you're not sure if you're going to use it a lot or you don't have a big space then this is definitely a great buy. You can first use their included software and kind of get your feet wet. Uh, it's really fun to just kind of select the design at two or three clicks and you're done. And the results from that is actually great. And then once you're ready, you can uh, upgrade to a more substantial software that allows you to uh, get more into the nitty gritty details and uh, get exactly what you're looking for. Uh, but of course, it's also a bit more difficult to learn. The only thing that I'm gonna mention that uh, just like all other lasers, build an enclosure around it. Uh, it's just so much easier to work with. As Like this, your room will fill with smoke and you're gonna be breathing that smoke, which is really unhealthy, uh, to some materials actually poisonous. So uh, either work outside or build an enclosure. I have some videos uh, that can help you with that as well. So with that, I think we're at the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. Also make sure to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time.